It's a beautiful mid-March afternoon. The sun has come out. The temperatures have gone up unseasonably warm. Uh, I took my coat off because of it, and I've been working here collecting up some firewood, and I think I'm ready to make some lunch. So today I want to make keto gumbo. If you're interested in knowing what keto gumbo is, keep watching. So what is a keto gumbo? Well, a gumbo, to start with, is a great, tasty, spicy dish. It comes from the southern United States. It's usually associated with Cajun peoples in Louisiana. And by the way, if you're not aware, Nova Scotia and the Cajun people have a very close association because Cajuns actually originated in Nova Scotia. They were the Acadians that were expelled, and many of them went to that area of the United States, and that's where the word Cajun comes from. Okay, back to the meal itself. So what is a gumbo? Well, it can be a whole lot of vegetables, usually with some sausage and some shrimp in it, okra, and of course keto, or Cajun spices. So that's what it is. The thing that takes it off of the keto menu is the fact that it's usually made with rice. Rice being a high carbohydrate food doesn't go well with the keto diet. So if I can substitute out the rice for something else, then maybe I can get it back on the keto diet. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be using cauliflower rice. And we'll talk about how you can make your own cauliflower rice when we get to prepping the meal. But I won't be giving you the amounts of each of the ingredients I'm putting in. And the reason is, is I've modified this from another recipe. I've actually just shrunk it down and had to remove a few things that I couldn't get a hold of easily. But I'm going to put the link to the original recipe in the video description. It is for a 10 serving meal. So I couldn't do that out here in the woods and then eat it all before having to carry it home. But the nice thing about making a keto gumbo or any gumbo for that matter in the woods, it's all going to be done in one pot. No other dishes necessary. But I guess the first thing I need to do is lay out my ingredients so that I can show you, get a fire started, and then we'll start cooking. All right, quickly, I'll go over the ingredients for my gumbo. I'll go over the process for putting this together, but I won't spend very much time on it because I need to get a fire started in my uh, Firebox Freestyle stove that I'm using today. And uh, I'll just demonstrate as I go along. All right, so ingredients. I have a hot, spicy Cajun sausage. It's not traditional, but I have a sausage cut up in here. I'll separate it from the shrimp. I'm going to be putting that in the pot after the olive oil goes in to, and heats it up so that I start to brown up the sausages. And once they start to brown up, then I'll add in my vegetables. And in this mixture, I have uh, green, red, and yellow peppers. I have onion and I have garlic. Uh, if I was trying to be as traditional as possible, I would be using okra, but I couldn't access any okra overnight last night before I came out today. So I am going to have to go without okra. It does add a wonderful flavor. And if you can get your hands on it, then it's appropriate to put it in the meal. So that's what goes in second. And then after that is all sauteed in, I have a water bottle sitting here somewhere with 750 milliliters of chicken broth. And then I'll be putting that in and we'll start to add the other ingredients, which will be diced tomatoes. By the way, if you're going to be using diced tomatoes in any of your keto recipes, take a look at the back of the can. My wife wouldn't believe it until I showed her. Many of them have sugar and other spices included. Make sure that yours has no sugar included if you're on the keto diet. Once that, that goes in... Then I can add my shrimp in, and then as I can add in my spices. Now, I know someone's going to say something about this. This is Clubhouse Cajun Spices. It's all I could find when I went to the grocery stores. Uh, I know there are much better blends out there. And when I can get my hands on a really good Cajun spice, then I'll, I'll have that in my kit. But this is what I'm using today because it's the one I could get easily. Actually, it was the only one I could find reasonably uh, without going through a lot of stores. And finally, just before the meal is ready, then I'm going to be adding my cauliflower rice. Now, let me open this up and show it to you, and we'll just speak to it for a second. So, if it looks like rice, uh, there's a reason for it. Literally, all you have to do to make cauliflower rice is take a brand new head of cauliflower, take your grater, put your grater on a plate, grate the cauliflower, you're done. That's it. That's all there is to making cauliflower rice. Some people like to use food processors. I actually find them more of a hassle. I can get them more even uh, size pieces 
that look more like rice if I just use my hand grater. Uh, then you can either use it directly or you can freeze it, which this was frozen, and bring it out and add it into the meal. Or, and I've done this, you can dehydrate it. And I could have brought out dehydrated uh, cauliflower rice and added that in today. But since everything else is running fresh, might as well use fresh cauliflower rice. Okay, those are the ingredients. That is the step-by-step -step process. Now let's get a fire on and get to making this. All right, to cook th this meal, I have a stove that I've been testing out. You may have followed on my channel as well. This is the Firebox Freestyle. And I'm using it in what is known as the bushcraft eight configuration so it's all eight components of the two stoves put together into one long rectangular stove and i'll explain the reason i am doing that in a moment so uh, the benefit of doing this i guess is that i should be able to have better control over the heat uh, i can move my pot to wherever i think the heat is what i need it to be at that moment so yeah, that's the reason why I decided to use this stove or this configuration of this stove to do the cooking with. And uh, you can see my fire is, it's got a bit more flame than you normally would want. But the way I have arranged the wood inside, I took a, a, a suggestion from Steve at the Firebox stove who thought it would be helpful if I laid a couple of larger pieces of wood down on the bottom to reduce airflow and create a bed for the coals to build on. So I did that in one half of the stove and on my left end of the stove, there are just a couple of bigger pieces of wood. So that's why you can see the flame, it seems to be more concentrated to the end where the grate is open, but that's okay. I can, as long as I keep things moving, then I should be able to prevent things from burning. So what's the trick here? Well, what's, what comes next? Let's start by heating up the pan. I think I may put on a couple of these fire sticks. Not that there's much of a risk for my pot dropping through. It's a 14 centimeter pot, but just to be sure. So that's normally way too much flame, but if I'm careful, I should be able to do this. In goes a little bit of olive oil. And that is not going to take very long for that to heat up. I have gloves handy, by the way. And as you can see, it's a brand new, first time used uh, Zebra Billy Pot. This is the 14 centimeter pot. Good size pot for doing a, a stew in like this, or I guess you can call a gumbo a stew. It's probably not an accurate term, a gumbo is a gumbo. All right, my oil is starting to sizzle so as you can see i'm throwing in my sausages they are raw all i'm trying to do with these is brown them a little bit so i have to keep them moving once they are starting to brown up then i can go to the next step i think i am going to move it down to the end with less flame Now they're sizzling good. I'm not trying to fully cook them at this point. I'm trying to eh, maybe caramelize them a little bit. I'm putting my gloves on just for safety. Another way of doing it, hold it up off of the flame so I don't uh, burn things. If you get a little browning in the bottom of your pot, that's okay because that's going to add flavor to the stew or to the gumbo. You can hear them sizzling. I'm going to try and show you what they look like. Hopefully that's showing up on there. You can see they're starting to brown, but they're not burning. They're just browning. That's all I'm looking for. Now you can see my fire is dying down. Actually, I have less flame at this end, which is kind of nice. And this is when I add in the rest of my vegetables. So I have, as I mentioned, 
green, red and yellow peppers, onions and garlic. If I had had the okra, I would have uh, sauteed the okra before adding the other ingredients to the fire or to the pot. And all I'm looking to do now is start to have them go translucent. So what I'll do is that's going to take a minute is I'll work on this and when they're ready for the next step, that's when I'll bring you back. All right, I think this was a good call having the fire pit eight for this. You can see I've got flame down at this end, not so much at this end. That way I can reduce the amount of heat underneath the pot. If I want to increase the sizzle, put it directly over the flame for a second. That has been sizzling long enough. All right, next step. So let's see if I can give you a look inside. You can see how the sausages are browned. You can see how all the vegetables have sauteed and have gotten a little soft. Now it's time to add the chicken broth. I have 750 milliliters or three cups of it here. I think I'm going to hold back a little bit. Yeah, maybe not quite a cup. So I think I put in a little bit more than two cups. Hopefully you can see what I've got going here. I can add more in a moment if I need to. I think that go right over the flame now. Bring that up to heat. My tomatoes go in. All right. Yeah, that's right. Now, I think I need a stick or two in here. So, Steve, I know you like to watch the videos on the stoves. You are right. That is the way to create a coal bed. It works especially well in a stove like the Bushcraft 8, and I expect the Bushcraft 6. And I don't see why you couldn't do it in the other configurations where I put the longer or the larger pieces of wood. They are burning, but they're not burning intensely. So that allows me to push my pot down to that end for uh, it's slowing it down, depending on, of course, where the flames are. So I have quite a bit of beef stock, all my vegetables. Now the next thing, I'm going to have to find my sea salt. But now I put in the Cajun spices. How much? How spicy do you like your Cajun food? I don't know. I've got two or three tablespoons in there now. I guess I'll stop there because I can always add more. Can't take it out, right? So I still have to add my sea salt. Now the game is just waiting. I'll be adding my sea salt. I'll bring this to a boil, and then I'm just gonna let it simmer for, it says about 30 minutes. I suspect that I won't need all 30 minutes because I've got a much smaller quantity than the full recipe calls for. And then I'll add the shrimp at the end of that. So what I'll do is I'll bring it back when it's time to add the shrimp. So it's been almost 25 minutes and I've been checking every couple of minutes uh, to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom of the pot. It's simmering a lot hotter than you might do at home, but it's not, no, there's nothing wrong in there. That's perfect. So I think what I will do, yeah, might as well do it right now. So the next step is to add the shrimp. Now for shrimp, I went to the grocery store. These are pre-cooked shrimp. So if you were using fresh prawns, you'd want to make sure that the tails were off and that they were deveined. Uh, you can use virtually any size you want, but these are the type you would get on a tray with a little dipping sauce. So frozen on a tray. So they are pre-cooked. So they really don't take much in the way of cooking. Had they been raw, I would have to give them a whole five minutes, but since they're not raw, I really don't have to. And my cauliflower rice, though, it is raw in the sense that it's, well, it was frozen, but it was not pre-cooked. Yeah, oop, don't get the leaves in there. I guess I'll put it all in. If I don't eat it all, I'll just take home what I don't eat. Now, this is where I'll know whether or not I put in too much in the way of, or not enough in the way of water. Yes, I, or not water. But my chicken stock, 
All right, it's not bad, okay. How am I gonna show you this? Can you see what I've got at this point? Everything is stewed, it's looking very good. It's a little thicker than you might otherwise have a gumbo, only because I held back on a little bit of the stock. But five minutes, that's all it's gonna take, and we will be ready. Try things a little differently this time rather than sitting down and then getting up and sitting down trying to adjust the camera. I thought I'd show it to you before I sat down. So there's my gumbo. Here is my spoon so I can kind of show you what's in there. The rice all cooked up. There's shrimp. There's sausage and you can tell by the color just how much of the Cajun spice went in and colored it up. Well, it certainly smells wonderful. But I guess the taste test is what comes next. So I'll reposition the camera and we'll do the taste test. Probably should have waited a little bit. It's still very hot, but I'm hungry. So <laughs> let's give it a try anyway. Hmm. Piece of the sausage. That was just the rice and vegetables. Piece of the sausage. And of course, a shrimp. Got to try a shrimp. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's spicy, but you know what? I think I could add just a little bit more spice to it. And in my little spice kit, somewhere, where's the liquid one? I had some real hot sauce. There it is. This is a, it's made locally, and it's a whoop, dangerously hot, hot sauce. So it's only going to get, ooh, yikes, quarter teaspoon. I may have overdone it. We'll see. Give that a stir. All right, that seems to have mixed through. Let's try this out. Oh my goodness, spot on, spot on. Just that little bit of extra of spiciness brought out all the different flavors. So, I could have given the rice maybe two or three more minutes. I gave it the five minutes, but I guess it depends on how soft you like your rice. This has the texture of rice, so I guess I can't complain. It's exactly what you would want in a gumbo. You want some texture to your rice. That 25 minutes of simmering, the vegetables didn't disintegrate, they held their shape, but the flavors just moved all through. Mm. It's all about the ingredients with this type of meal. Uh, I didn't have the andouille, I hope I'm saying it correctly, the andouille sausage, it's traditional. I didn't have the okra. I did use cooked shrimp rather than raw prawns or raw shrimp. And other than that, my Cajun spice, grocery store, but you know, nothing wrong with it really, especially after I added a little bit more heat at the end. Yeah, this actually turned out very good. And what I liked about it, it was all done in one pot. I didn't have to cook things in multiple vessels. It was just add one thing on top of the other. Took a little bit of time, I guess totally 35 minutes from the get-go from when I started uh, sauteing the sausages, then adding the vegetables, and then adding, you know, the broth and going on from there. But really, it's just a matter of tending the fire. And as you saw with that firebox freestyle in the Bushcraft 8 configuration, it was quite nice to be able to move my pot back and forth to find the hot spot or the sweet spot where I needed it to be for, for the right amount of heat without burning it, but still maintain some simmering. Oh, you got to try this one. If you like spicy food, if you like gumbos, if you like shrimp and sausages, you got to try this one. You won't miss the rice if you use the cauliflower rice. You'll think you're eating regular rice when it's done with everything else. Okay, as I mentioned, what I will do is I'll put a link 
to the original recipe that I used as a basis for making this. The YouTube channel is Wholesome Yum and uh, a lady by the name of Maya and she has all kinds of great recipes well presented. Uh, I like watching her channel. She does a lot in shorts. Then you click the link, you go to her channel, you find the recipe. So this is Maya's recipe with just a few ingredients left out or a few ingredients substituted for something else. And uh, yeah, it's, it just works. So it's been a low carb meal. The, I will give you, well, of course, when you go to the link, you're gonna find all the macros for the fats, the proteins and everything else in with the recipe. And I would encourage you to have a look and check out the other recipes that Maya has on her channel, Wholesome Yum. Uh, I've done a few recipes. I think I've done a couple from her channel. If I haven't, I'll, I'll certainly be doing some in the future. This is spot on. What a great thing to have on a, it's still chilly, it's mid-March. It's turning the corner towards spring, but it's still a little bit chilly. But I'm enjoying this. This is perfect for a day like this. Okay, folks, that's all I have for you in this video. If you have any comments or questions about this recipe or anything else or any meals you would like me to try, and if they're not already low-carb or ketogenic meals, give, them, give me the names of them. I'll see if I can't look them up or at least modify them to make them something that we can cook out here in the woods. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.